Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. Flight out by Three Mile Creek. Bent a tire and busted a couple of spokes. It's the rear wheel on the left side. How soon can you fix it? If it's busted that bad, it's got to be tempered. Take time. I'll get right to work on it as soon as you bring it in, but take most of the night. Oh, no. How soon can you fix it? You can leave in the morning. I'll have to put the passengers up to the hotel overnight. I've already lost a half a day in that sandstorm. Hello, Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole? Paul, what's wrong with Mr. Cole? Well, it looks to me like his coach is limping on the back side. Luke, how's the marshal? Well, I just left him. Doc says his ankle's not broken, but he'll be flat in his back a few days. Well, what are we going to do for a marshal, meanwhile? Paul, look. Now, back in Santa Fe, we'd make you wait inside the coach. You're not in Santa Fe now, Carter. Well, who asked you to butt in? I told the marshal I'd take care of things for when he's down. Good luck. So don't kick. Roberta Hunt, room six, upstairs on the left. Patience Hubbard, room seven, upstairs right. Ed Simmons, room eight, upstairs left. John Radley, room nine, upstairs right. Fred Hawkins, room 11. Upstairs, straight back. Alfred, Fredo Di Marco. Alfredo De Marco Orsini, Conte di Mantova. Allow me. Room 10, upstairs right, correct? Uh, could you tell me where your bank is? The bank. No matter, I shall do it later. Are you uh, still want to know where the bank is? If you please. I'll tell you, you go down this main street, right to the end, and you turn right. Yes. And then you follow your nose for about uh, 80 miles. You can't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to pull our leg with all this? I can't believe you're on the level real. I can hardly believe the same of you. Together. We'll have some fun with this foreign dude. Maybe liven up this jerkwater town. Why do they all treat him that way, Paul? Well, it's a little hard to explain, son. Someone who's strange or different is often treated with cruelty. But why? Ignorance, mostly. Sometimes when people don't understand something, they, they think it's to be feared or hated. That's wrong. It takes a long time to learn differently. Come on, let's eat. Uh, 
I beg your pardon. There is no one at the desk. Perhaps you can tell me where your bank is. We don't have a bank here. My trip has taken longer than expected. It will be necessary for me to exchange some lira for dollars. Well, the bartender at the last chance saloon. Sometimes he acts as banker when anyone needs one. He sees most of the money that comes through town. Thank you. I shall go there after dining. On second thought, that might not be such a good idea. Going to the saloon, I mean. I'm afraid there are some folks in town who, uh, well, who aren't used to strangers. Like the gentleman I met in the lobby? Thank you for the warning, but I'm not afraid. Try not to judge all of us by the worst ones you meet. I'm an outsider here. It is not for me to judge at all. This menu is unfamiliar to me. Have you any recommendations? Try the cherry pie. It's great. Thank you. I shall do that. Come on, son. My son would have been almost his age had he lived. You are most fortunate. He's all right. <laughs> Where'd you pick him up? Well, he was on the stage when I took it over. All I know is the ticket says New Orleans to Frisco. He's got a big trunk on top full of stuff. Yeah, full of fancy pants and two-piece underwear, I bet you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what if he don't come in here today? We'll go up to his room and drag him out. We don't get a chance like this very often. Not in this graveyard. <laughs> How's that wheel coming, Niles? Oh, the iron the rim's worse than I thought it was. Don't make them the way they used to. Suppose you can't get it out by tonight. I don't think so. Where are you going? Over to the last chance for a while. I ought to be there when our friend comes in. You think so? This is our town too, Mark. And when people get mistreated here, it's partly our fault. Besides, I promised Micah. I'll wait here. <laughs> Good afternoon, gentlemen. Pernod. Huh? Pernod, the liqueur. Well, mister, this ain't no candy store. It's a saloon. <laughs> Very well, whiskey. Two bits. I understand that you often act as banker here. Well, there's a new bank being built. It ain't open yet. But until then, you perform the function? Oh, I sometimes buy a little gold or make a little change for the boys. What do you got in mind? I wish to exchange some Italian lira for dollars. They are redeemable at any bank at the official rate of exchange. Well, uh... I don't know. Uh, I would, of course, expect you to make a profit on the transaction for obliging me. Yeah, let me see them things. Perhaps you would like to buy the note yourself? No, I buy cattle, not paper. I'd watch out for this guy, Sweeney. He looks like a sharper to me. Might be one of them Philadelphia counterfeiters in disguise. That is a disguise, ain't it? You know, this stuff don't look like money to me. So thin, you could blow your nose. That's too bad. 
Guess it ain't worth gluing back together, is it? The note you just destroyed represents a good sum of money. Uh -huh. Maybe you ought to get down and get the other half. Or maybe you'd like to try to make me do it. Money's never an adequate excuse for a quarrel. Well, that's real nice of you. That's generous. I assure you I have no hard feelings. I'm going to buy you a drink. Get a bottle and a glass, Frank. Get with the big glasses. When I buy a man a drink, I buy him a big one. And I expect him to drink it. No, thank you. Mister, you got a choice. You can drink it, or I'm going to pour it down your throat. I expect satisfaction on the usual terms. Well, you're going to get satisfaction. Brother! I just thought I'd remind you. This gentleman is unarmed. If you shoot him, it'll be a plain case of murder. Men get hanged for that, Groter. All right. We'll make it legal. Get him a gun, Gilkey. We'll shoot it out. But of course. That is understood. That is why I offer you my card. For the duel. What do you mean, for the duel? These things must be done properly. It is a serious business for one man to kill another. It deserves respect. You have no card, I presume. Hey, Grover, give me your card! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I ain't got a card. Very well, then. We shall meet at dawn. My second will inform you of the place, when it is selected. Yeah, well, you do that. And then dawn's all right with me. And we'll get some cards and seconds and those things, and we'll be there, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Marshal. McCain, is it? Look, McCain, the badge is temporary. Would you do me the honor of acting as my second in this matter? All right. I'll be your second. I'm grateful. <laughs> Never turn your back on a man like Broder. That's the first rule around here. I see I chose my second wisely. Where's your son? He's at the blacksmith shop. Shall we go get him? Good. I owe him my thanks as well. Oh? How? The cherry pie was delicious. <laughs> I wish you'd try to realize this is North Fork, not Rome. Killing is a different matter here. I'm only trying to make you understand what you're letting yourself in for, Count. Please. My American friends call me Freddy. Freddy. All right, Freddy. Look, you're a nice fellow. I don't want to see you get killed. Without you, I would already be dead. Back there at the bar. You must allow me to fight my own battle now, in my own way. I'd be glad to. But Groder and his boys won't let you fight your own way. It is one of the duties of a second to see that the rules are observed. You come from a place that has several hundred years of culture and tradition. This town was a raw wilderness ten years ago. Our rules are a lot different than yours. And tougher. You made that point quite clear. No, we don't have many formalities. The man to draw and fire quickest is the one left alive. And Groder has proved he can do just that. Has he? He interests me. You see, I've only traveled in your west for a short time, looking for land to buy. He's a type I've never seen before. Grote is the type none of us would like to see again. Then perhaps I shall do the town a small service. What is his job? Well, he buys cattle for a big outfit out of Santa Fe. He and his boys are waiting for a herd to drive back. And when he's not working? For recreation, he gets drunk, beats people up, wrecks bars. Or he picks a quarrel for the pure pleasure of killing a man. Has he done this before? That's right, Freddy. How soon do we leave? Well, it's ten to four. We'll have to leave in an hour. In the meantime, I believe I will follow the example of your son. You two should get some sleep, my friend. You look tired. All right. 
But I sure wish I knew what kind of a shot you are. Because if you can't back your play, I can still find a way out. Fred? Freddy? 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 Time to get up. What time is it? Well, it's almost five o'clock. We'd better get started. Wouldn't do to be late, would it? I can guarantee you Groder and his gang will be there on time. Sleep of the innocent. He's a fine boy. Uh, what is it, son? You going now? I want you to go on back to sleep. No, I want to come along. Now, if I wanted you to be there, I'd have said so, son. I know, Paul, but... Now, there's nothing to be gained by your watching. I just hope when you grow up, there'll be other ways of handling men like Rhoda than using guns. I know the Count will agree with me. I agree, Mark. I'm never proud when I'm forced into using these. All right, I understand. Ready? I'm ready. See you later, son. Good luck, Count. I know you'll win. Thank you. I'll try my best. Bye, Mark. You go back to sleep. It has finally showed up. There's still time to get out, Freddy. Your opponent has four men. I'm ahead. I have you. All right, let's get it over with. Here's your gun. All right, put it on. On the contrary, take yours off. We shall use these. You may choose whichever one you prefer. What are you talking about? I learned the rules last night. Count de Montove is the insulted party. You offended him. That gives him the choice of weapons. And he chooses to use his own dueling pistols. Well, suppose I choose to use my own gun. Well, I'm here to see the rules are carried out. I intend to do just that. I got four men, McCain. You can't win. Neither can you. Because you'll be my first shot, Groter. All right. Looks like I'll have to kill him with his own gun. You have the choice of weapons. You pick them. This thing's only got one shot. I've never needed more. supposed to draw it out of our pants pocket? We do not draw. We stand back to back. We take ten paces and stop. Turn on ready, aim and fire. Mr. Kolb has agreed to count off the paces. He's unarmed and neutral. So whatever you're ready, boys, we'll stand over here. All right, gentlemen, 
Take your places back to back. Whenever you're ready. You may call the signal to start. All right, I'm ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Get him guilty. Cut him down. Hold it. Well, now, wait a minute. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Let's, let's talk about it. You ain't gonna get anything by killing me. Now, just take it easy a little. Let's, let's talk about it. Now, take it easy. Don't shoot it. The holder of this pistol is entitled to a free shot at this man at 10 paces, at any time he chooses. I entrust this pistol to my friend Lucas McCain, and I urge him to use the shots in it whenever he chooses. But you can't do that. Would you prefer me to take my shot? Well, I ain't never shot one of those before. But he used my guns like I wanted to be a different story. Will someone be good enough to lend me a pistol, please? You see the dead branch on that tree? The lowest one. prefer me to take my shot now? No. Then Mr. McCain will take it for me. It is discretion. Well, thank you very much, Count. And if Mr. Groder is still in my sights in 10 seconds, I think I'll do just that. <laughs> well, that was a fine display of shooting, Count. Thank you. The stage will be leaving at 10 o'clock. I'll be there. Hey, Count, how do you manage one of these things anyway? <laughs> Shall we go? <laughs> I think you better take this with you, Freddy. We'll never see Grote around here again. I'm sure you will not. But please, keep the pistol as a sign of my friendship. I owe you more than I can repay. Oh, thank you, Freddy. <laughs> Arrivederci, my good friend. <laughs> Goodbye, Freddy. Mark? What do you think, Mark? I guess we would. Maybe even funnier. 